How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. Today in the shop we're going to be talking about how to set up your dust collection. Now, there are a lot of different ways to manage dust in your shop. So in this video we're going to talk about how to set up your dust collection, how to run duct work around your shop to each tool, and how we set everything up. But before we do that, guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. And don't forget, guys, we are gonna have links to all this stuff in the description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. The dust collector I decided to go with is one that I think a lot of other people are using, and that's the Central Machine two horsepower dust collector from Harbor Freight. And if you saw our last video, you saw how we mounted that to the wall and we did several upgrades to improve the functionality of that. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to that right here at the top of the screen. Now there are a lot of ways to run duct work around your shop, but what I found was the cheapest and the easiest to use was PVC pipe. It's readily available and it's cheap. Now, there are a couple different kinds of PVC pipe you're gonna come across. One is Schedule 40, and that's gonna have a really thick wall on it. What we decided to use was this sewage or drain pipe PVC. It's a lot thinner walled, easier to work with, and a lot cheaper. I'll show you guys how I routed the ductwork in my shop. It was kind of a trial and error process, finding the right fittings and the right placement for everything. And one suggestion I have to you is to really plan it out and go ahead and test fit it out on the floor before you put everything up on the wall to hopefully prevent having to make too many changes as you're going through that. Like I said, we do have a video on how we set all this up, so make sure you check that out. But let's talk about the individual components and what they do. So to really get the most out of your system, we decided to go with a cyclone separator. The one we decided to go with is the Oneida Super Dust Deputy. And what that's gonna do for you is as your collector brings in all that dust and all those chips, they're gonna spin around inside this cyclone and the larger chips and larger dust is gonna drop down into your collection bin. And the reason that's important is it's gonna extend the life of your filter. And without a separator, those things could get clogged up and filled up really, really fast. So the Cyclone's gonna separate out most of our dust and our big chips and stuff like that. And that really fine dust is gonna be pumped back up and through our filter. 
the filter that we're using is a canister filter from Win Environmental. Now that's going to be a huge improvement from those filter bags that you see in most dust collectors. For one, this filter is going to filter down to one micron. So it's going to take out most of that extra fine dust that finds its way back out of your dust collector and into the air and eventually into your lungs, which can be very dangerous for you. Also, these pleated canister filters have the ability to let out a larger volume of air, which is important because your dust collector can only suck in the amount of air that it can exhale. And so a canister filter is not only going to filter out that extra fine dust, keeping your shop clean and keeping you safe, it's also going to improve the suction of whatever dust collector you happen to be using. And of course, any dust that does get trapped in that canister has to go somewhere. So on the bottom of that, we mounted a five gallon bucket on a gamma seal lid. So any dust that gets trapped by that filter can drop down into this bucket. And keep in mind, since we're using a separator, there's gonna be very little dust that actually makes it down into that. Most of that is gonna end up in our collection bin. Now, because our dust collector is mounted high up on the wall, we also mounted this aftermarket on off switch that's routed up to the motor just to get it down and more accessible. Now I know a lot of guys like to use remote systems for their dust collectors. From most of the workstations in my shop, I'm never too far away. So a switch like this works out great for me. So I will put a link to this in the description below, as well as to a couple different remote systems if you'd rather have a remote. Me personally, anything that has a remote, I'm probably just gonna lose it. Now I'm not gonna get too deep in how we set all this up because we did that in the other video. So now let's get on and take a look at our duct work. We came directly out of our cyclone into a splitter. This is gonna split that five inch connection into two four inch connections. And as you can see, we have our duct work that goes up and is distributed around the shop. And then we have another drop here that goes down to our flex hose. It was important for me to have duct work that were routed to all my tools, but I also wanted to be able to clean up any excess dust that did make its way onto my bench tops or onto the floor. So that's what this is here. I have about 40 foot of four inch flex hose just coiled up here that I can use with these accessories from Powertech. First one I have here is a floor sweep. That is really nice to have because all I have to do is hook this up and I can just vacuum up all that dust off the floor. One thing I hate is having to sweep in the shop because while you're sweeping, you're also kicking up a bunch of dust that's gonna go everywhere and land on every surface in your shop. Another attachment I got from Powertech is this bench top wand. So all I have to do is hook this up so I can just quickly go over and clean up any mess on my workbenches. Powertech also supplies these clips that you can mount on the wall so you can easily mount your tools up on the wall and out of the way and they are super easy to grab whenever you need them. The other thing I did just to keep all this organized is I mounted this rack up on the wall to coil that hose around. This is something like you can find at your local home improvement store or Walmart, typically used to hang up bicycles or ladders or things like that on your wall. And that worked out perfect for coiling up our hose on the wall. The other thing I did just to keep this up and off the floor is I just mounted a four inch flange here on the wall and the tool end of that hose fits nicely over that and just keeps it up and out of the way. One thing you'll notice is that for every drop and every tool in the shop, we do have one of these blast gates from Powertech. These have worked out great for me. And it's important to get the most performance that you shut off anything that you're not using and you only open the blast gate for the area that you need. Another thing you'll notice about our duct work is that we don't use any 90 degree angles. Every joint in our system is gonna be either a 45 or a Y. So we do as much as we can not to choke out that system so we can get as much airflow as possible. We want as many straight runs and gentle curves as we can get. The tightest curve we have in our shop is gonna be in this corner right here. While we are making a 90 degree turn there in that corner, what we use to create that is two 45s with a short length of pipe in between to make it a little bit more of a gradual turn. You can see we have our long straight runs up high on the wall. And then at every drop, we have a Y that drops down at a 45 degree angle down to another 45 degree fitting and then straight down to our blast gate and our tool. In areas that I needed to, I used that metal banding to hold up our pipe. 
But over here on this wall of the shop, we lucked out and I was able to use these supports here to hold up my pipe without having to use any other types of fasteners to hold it to the wall. Then down over here, we have that 45 that drops down to our floor sweep. And then beyond that, we just terminated it with a cap on the end. Another thing you'll notice is that for every joint, we didn't use any PVC adhesive for any of this. We just dry fit everything together, which gives it a pretty nice tight friction fit anyway, but we did go back and use duct tape just to seal that up even better. And also since it's not glued, we did put a screw into each joint so that we don't have to worry about them coming apart over time. And one thing that's really great about doing it this way is that nothing is permanent. It all can be taken apart and rerouted and reused in any way we need to in the future. Another important thing we did is we wanted to use as little flex hose as possible. We wanted to bring that PVC ductwork as close to each tool as we can and use a minimal amount of that flexible hose. Now the flexible hose is great, but those ridges can cause some resistance in your airflow and you want to minimize that as much as possible. Now one thing I did want to mention about using this PVC drain pipe is that while it is cheaper and pretty easy to use, it can be a little bit of trial and error finding all the fittings and stuff like that that actually work with the pipe you're using. One thing we found was that most of the fittings and accessories that we're using were pretty close to fitting, but they weren't perfect. So one trick that we used was to just wrap a few layers of duct tape around each of those blast gates and some of those other fittings to help us get a nice tight seal inside of that PVC pipe. Now the way I have this set up here for my bandsaw is really nice. The blast gate is right here, really easy to get to. I just open that up. I also have my bandsaw on a rolling cart, so if I need to, I can roll this out to work on whatever I need to. Has just a very short section of flex hose there to allow me some movement. And then whenever I'm done, I just push it back and close that gate. Another feature we incorporated into our system that I was really excited about is this floor sweep here from PowerTech. This thing is great because any sweeping that you have to do in your shop, you can just sweep it over to this. You can sweep it right into that floor sweep and it's gonna suck it up and send it on to your collection bin. Now for this, we just ran our PVC pipe all the way down to the floor with our PowerTech floor sweep fitting on the bottom. And then here at about waist height, we also put in a blast gate so that we can shut that off and open it up whenever we need to. Now, one of the worst tools in my shop for dust collection is this cobalt miter saw right here. This thing has terrible stock dust collection, and I do have some plans to build a shroud right here to really improve that dust collection, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But you can see the way I have this routed right now is I have this drop that comes down at a 45 and then drops down here. I put all my blast gates about waist height, which is working out pretty good for me. And you can see we have a short section of flex hose here that goes down below our bench and then another straight section of PVC that goes here to a splitter that reduces that four inch into two, two and a half inch. Now one of those goes up to the stock dust collection on the miter saw. The other I have blocked off right now and that's gonna be going to that shroud I was telling you about. And as you can see going over here to the other side of the shop, we have some duct work going up and around our lumber rack and then back down here to a Y. I really like the idea of using a Y here at the bottom of your drops. That way you can serve as two tools off of one drop. Right now we have one that's gonna be going to my rigid belt sander. I'm just waiting on some fittings for that. And another going to this rigid piece of hose that goes down and services my drill press. And this flex hose here is also just friction fit onto that blast gate. That way I can remove it and I can use this drop to service other tools as well. Now let's see how well this does actually collecting dust. Now I know at this point in the video, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, what am I doing about my table saw? And as you can see, I'm still using just a regular eight foot fold out table as an outfeed right now. That is gonna change very soon. I'm gonna be building a table saw workbench that's gonna have its own integrated dust collection. So make sure you stay tuned for that. For my smaller tools like sanders and track saw and things like that, I'm still gonna be using the Dust Right dust separator paired with my shop vac. 
Another important part of our dust collection system is this air filtration system from WIN. Now your dust collector running ductwork to your tools is gonna hopefully get most of that large chips and most of the dust. And if you build it out like we did, hopefully there won't be too much fine dust in the air, but just in case, it's nice to have an air filtration system like this one here. This filtration system from WIN has a HEPA filter that's gonna filter the air down to 0.5 microns. And any dust that make, does make it into the air during your projects is hopefully gonna get sucked up through this filtration system and that's gonna push out some nice clean air for you to breathe. The wind filtration system does come with a remote so you can turn it on and off. You can also adjust the fan speed and you can set a timer so you can set it to run for one hour, two hours, four hours, or as long as you're going to be in the shop. All right, guys, that is it for how to install your dust collection system and route your ductwork in your shop. I hope this video helped you out, guys. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure you leave it down in the comment section below. And don't forget, guys, we are going to have links to all this stuff in the description. If you haven't done it yet, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Keep that shop clean.